Okay, so Kaushal, can you uh, tell me that you can see the recording? Yes, ma'am, it has started. Okay, good. Uh, thanks. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Let's begin our class. And uh, what we have seen uh, till uh, the last week, which was the eighth week, uh, has been, especially after the quiz two, has been functions, recursive functions. And then uh, the last week, all of it, we spent on uh, pointers and accessing, especially accessing arrays using pointers. And in today's uh, class, as well as in the rest of the week, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about structures and then how to use structures and pointers together. And this will allow us to define these self-referential data structures, which are very immensely helpful in practice. And they are, in fact, some of the data structures that, that are heavily used to do searching, sorting, and maintaining data when you have large data sets. So uh, knowing how they are implemented is something that will be very helpful to you. OK, so let's get started with uh, some very uh, basic problems and see where uh, uh, where these structures are useful. So let's let's think of a toy problem still that we are given a rectangle uh, in two D uh, and re rectangle and a point in two D. All of these are in two D and we want to determine if the point is inside the rectangle. So we'll say that the point is inside the rectangle either if it lies completely inside the rectangle or if it lies on any of the boundaries, including the corner points, if the rectangle is, uh, if the point is one of the corner points, we will call it to be inside the rectangle, else we will call it outside the rectangle. So this is a, some toy problem that uh, we want to solve. So a typical uh, example is given on the right hand side, that is this rectangle is defined by these uh, points which are a x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4. And the point that we want to check is in fact this point x, y, and we want to test whether uh, this is inside the rectangle. Now what we are going to do for our purposes is to assume, uh, make some simplifying assumption saying that the rectangle is going to be what we call as axis parallel or axis aligned. That is the edges of the rectangle or the sides of the rectangle are always going to be parallel to the to one of the axes that is either the x axis or the y axis that is it will be parallel to the x axis therefore perpendicular to the y axis and the and vice versa so we are going to only deal with axis parallel rect, uh, rectangles and uh, we we still want to answer the same question that is given a rectangle how do you uh, determine whether a point is inside the rectangle or not. So the first thing that we want to ask is how do we represent a point? So the point is in a 2D, two dimensional space is represented using the X and Y coordinates. What about a rectangle? How do you represent a rectangle in uh, which is an axis parallel rectangle and it is in 2D? How do you represent that? So let's take answers. How do you represent this rectangle in uh, which is an axis parallel rectangle. What are different ways to represent this rectangle? From a certain interval in which the X lies and a certain interval in which the Y lies. That defines the every point inside the rectangle. So is it an, in, so how how many points are required? How many, I mean, what, what are the different points? So when I say, how do we represent a point? I want, I, I am going to have two things, the X and the Y. And for the moment also, let's assume that we are dealing with integral points. So I can say that these are two integers. So two integers define my point. When I say the a point in 2D, two integers define my integral point. Similarly, what, what I'm asking is, how do you represent the rectangle? Your answer is that it is represented using a range. So this range, how will you specify and what does this range tell you? Like we say that the point is inside this rectangle, if and only if it's no, x no, coordinate. No, no, is... no, no, slow, slow down, so Chinmay. So Chinmay, we don't we do not want to uh, answer this question about how do you uh, uh, decide whether the point is inside the rectangle. In fact, I'm just asking this question: how do we represent a rectangle? Yeah. So uh, let me just look at the answers that people have given on chat. Uh, Uh, 
um, rectangle meaning the uh, like the like the region or just the outer frame so see uh, rectangle meaning what so what the, what determines the rectangle it i mean when 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 you say that okay if i tell, want to tell you a rectangle how will i communicate a rectangle to you that you is the question i mean kind of huh using the edges the frame Okay, so if I tell you that the uh, the length of the rectangle is five and the breadth of the rectangle is eight, does it define a rectangle uniquely? No. No. So therefore, this is not a good definition of a rectangle, right? So it cannot define the rectangle uniquely. In fact, there are infinitely many rectangles with this specification. So if I want to communicate a rectangle to you, you should be able to tell me what is what. How do you represent this rectangle? And there are some answers, of course, which. Are correct on the chat. Okay, so please do not start answering when is a point inside the rectangle. That is not the question at the moment. Okay, so some of the answers are just like what is shown here in the picture. Although this is not an axis parallel rectangle, you can also turn this around to make it axis parallel and then say that the four coordinates define the rectangle correctly. That is valid. That is a valid answer. That is a slight overkill because you can do with 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 fewer things, right? So you can define the rectangle with two opposite points. That that is the two diagonal points of a rectangle. If you, if it's an axis parallel rectangle, you can define the two diagonal points, and that will determine the uh, determine that axis parallel rectangle uniquely. So this is something. This is one of the ways of representing an axis parallel rectangle so what we are saying is an axis parallel rectangle can be uniquely determined by two of the two endpoints of one of its diagonals and let's for the sake of concreteness always say that we are going to determine it by the lower left coordinate which is the which is the one which i am pointing out here as you note that this rectangle is not axis parallel but we can determine it by the lower left coordinate and the top right which will lie somewhere here so it need not lie in the x i mean the positive quadrant and so on but just uh, to make it a point i'm saying that there is some rectangle which is determined by the lower left and upper right so these are the two points which are enough to determine a rectangle and uh, uh, already we said that a point can be represented using Two coordinates, so therefore four coordinates are enough to represent a rectangle in this two D plane. Assume, let's assume for the moment that the rectangles are axis parallel. So does it answer the question? What are the? So this is not the only way. There are multiple ways to represent an axis parallel rectangle uniquely, but this is one way, and we'll be sticking to this way of representing. So. Uh, always we will have so if if you want to give input to this problem you need the four points which determine the rectangle uniquely and of course the first two first two elements of that i mean the first two inputs for you should be the coordinates of the uh, lower left point and the next two coordinates should be the x and the y coordinates respectively for the upper right point and so on so this is something that you uh, is one way to it, uh, to represent this rectangle yeah there is a question no no like i thought it was the only way to represent it like no 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 this is not of course this is not the only way this is one of the succinct ways okay why not four lines as i said right why why not other things yes we can have many other ways of representing we are just, so then you have to say what is a line so we have to say what is a line we have said what is a point we know how to determine a point in 2d or represent a point in 2d and we are talking about integral points we will also assume that the uh, coordinates of the rectangle are integral so therefore we will always have a uh, two integers determining a point and then four integers determining the um, determining a rectangle is that okay with everybody so uh, okay so then given this rectangle specified by the endpoints of the diagonal how would do we determine whether the point lies inside the rectangle so uh, i would like you to i mean observe here that there are two parts of the uh, parts of this thing that we are discussing the first is possibly the more interesting part which is the logical part of it that 
okay given a point and uh, and how this rectangle is determined rectangle is represented how do you determine whether the point is inside the rectangle this geometry part and the logic part i i am assuming that all of you can very well do it so we are not going to focus on that logical part we can ask several questions like are two rectangles intersecting are two rectangles uh, one inside the other completely um, and so on uh, but right now we are not going to ask those questions our focus is on representing this data in a proper way learning the way uh, c allows us to represent such data items that we want to represent so there is a logical part to it which is also very interesting we will let you exercise some of it in the lab when we allow, when we design when we have our lab on structures but today's discussion will be more focused on how do we represent it what is the what are the uh, types that c allows us to uh, you, use to represent these things so i want you to uh, make this distinction between the logical part of the problem and the representation part of the problem okay so uh, if you had represented the uh, rectangle using the uh, two end points of its diagonal then the then the function which you would have written which would you would have written to determine whether the point is inside the uh, rectangle would have some para, some such prototype which will look like this i mean again it can differ a little bit but more or less you will have to give the six points or six inputs which are integers and you will also have to make this communication with the person who is writing the function or make it clear when you write the function that the uh, first point which is x1 y1 is going to determine that uh, it is it is the lower left uh, point of the lower left uh, point of the um, rectangle x2 y2 is the upper right point of the uh, rectangle that is these two points determine the one of the diagonals and therefore they uniquely determine the rectangle and then x3 y3 is indeed the point that would that is the one that you want to check whether it lies inside the rectangle so this is the this can be the prototype of course with this prototype there can be multiple interpretations also because you can say that maybe x1 y1 is the point that i want to check x2 y2 is the lower left and x3 y3 is the uh, uh, upper right or in fact some weird things like x2 y2 is the point that i want to check or even weird that x1 x1 y1 represent uh, x1 and uh, x1 y1 x2 represent the first x the x coordinates and x3 y3 and so on i mean this is very bad notation but you could have done all of these things so this is something that you could have done and uh, all of this is possible with this kind of a thing because anyway all of these are integers that are you are going to give six integers it you must communicate with the function that you are going this is the interpretation so that the caller can call it appropriately but i hope the the parameters that you are going to pass are are going to be this in some order and of course the return type will be possibly 0 or 1 so 0 means that it is not inside the rectangle 1 means that it is inside the rectangle depending on what you want to answer so this is this is possibly the prototype and this to be filled i leave it to you all of you are able to fill that very quickly so i'm not going to fill that up for you so i mean just as an example this is an axis parallel rectangle in our language this is going to be determined by 10 minus 10 10 and this other endpoint is 10 10 and we are going to give this point 0 0 and some of you have already written code in the chat to tell whether the point lies inside the rectangle so that is something that is not difficult similarly another point here which is given which is not inside the rectangle and you should possibly answer 0 so the point that i am trying to make here is that this code is not difficult to write but I mean, having so many parameters is messy. Further, you have to communicate to the function that this is what I want to, I mean, this is what is the meaning of this. So instead, we would like to give this in a, at a more higher level or more abstract level and tell that, in fact, we are giving a rectangle, which is represented in the following way and a point. And you, you tell me whether this rectangle, whether this point lies inside the rectangle or not. And for that, we must be able to define what is a rectangle and what is a point. 
so we are going to come to that any questions or comments here and this is where we will define structures and see how structures allow us to neatly put things together and uh, uh, define our own user defined data types okay so uh, this was the first example we'll revisit this example again where we define the uh, rectangle and so on this is another example where we want to store store multiple related items together and um, in the previous example also it was multiple related items like you saw that a point is a is a collection of two point uh, a point is a, a point has two coordinates which is x and y so it's a collection of two integers we, since we are talking about integral points similarly a rectangle is a collection of two points because uh, we are talking about the rectangle being represented in a particular way and therefore we want to store data which is which is rela related together in a in a compact form and uh, another example of this is let's say we want to store information about some of you or about all of you in uh, which has the following information and uh, students may not be only from this class so the students may be from different programs but we have for every student the following information the roll number the name the age and the program and the just for the sake of uh, this thing we have different programs and each program has a code which we can say that btech is one dd is something mtech is something but it's an integer code that we are giving so uh, one of the possible ways is to say that we are going to determine write down four arrays each having the size which is determined by the number of students for which we have to uh, store the information so all the arrays have the same size however the type of each array is dependent on the uh, on the item that you want to store so the roll number is possibly and possibly a character array each of them is going to be of the each of your roll numbers have the same size so it is good otherwise names we, we have already seen that it is not good to store it in the two dimensional array because it is it eats up space so we will possibly have a pointer to a character age is an integer so we can have the third array as an integer array of size whatever this is of 10 students so 10 and then the program we said is an integer so again we can have an integer of size 10 integer array of size 10 so this is one possible way of storing uh, this data that we want to store so uh, as we have seen earlier that arrays allow us to store this information but all all the elements in a single array should have should be having the same type which is not the case in, in this case where for a single student we have different types of information that is the roll number the name age and the program program could have also been something else i mean we have taken it as an integer but it could have been some string or something and instead we would instead of having this information in four different arrays which are not related at all we would like to have it stored together and here is where structures are again useful and therefore we are going to study structures uh, how to define them how to use them so all of you or most of you are familiar with classes so you have seen something which allows you to put information together in fact c's all programs in c start with classes so you are familiar with this but we are going to study this in the context of c programming language and we are going to see what how structures are defined so any questions or comments still here okay so um, so what structures allow us to do is they will allow us to store variables of different data types together and let's see what this together means and uh, this uh, how 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 do you define a structure to have this everything all this data together for us so let's see the definition of a structure so the structure has this struct uh, this is a keyword and then there is a structure tag which is the name of the structure that we, we we are going to give it is not the variable name this by saying this you are not saying that you have defined a variable 
in fact structures are you can think of structures as user defined data types integer is something which is a basic data type which is given to you float char these are data types which are given to you structures are allowing you to define your own data types by putting together a variety of basic data types and making something that was not there but now you are saying that this is something which i want to define and i will use this in future so then uh, there there can be several members of this structure and uh, uh, this this is the definition let's see a specific example and then of course you want to complete these braces and put a semicolon so this is the definition of a structure and let's say we want to just like we had said earlier uh, we are going to define uh, the we are, we want to store this data for a student and we had said that we want to store the following information that is roll number name age and program so to define a structure uh, for that we are going to have a character array so this uh, this in the next few slides this will change this is a typo i should have defined this to be 9 or 10 at least uh, nine at least and possibly 10 but this is a character array which will allow you to store uh, um, store your roll number string and we'll see examples this is the name which is again a character array the age is an integer and we said that the program that we are going to say is also an integer so these are the different members of this structure and we'll also see how to access these members but these are the members so whenever i say that i have a i can define a variable of type struct student just like i i, I can say that i can define a variable of type integer i can say that i can define a variable of type struct student then the struct student will have all these members that i have defined which are roll number name age and program these are something that i have defined and therefore you can think of this structure uh, or this student being a user defined data type which i have defined and you can define your own uh, data type that you want to define okay so uh, yeah so as i said we, i can say after i have defined this i can say struct student s just the way i would have said that uh, int x i could i can say struct student s and this defines a variable s which has the type struct student so this has defined for me a new data type which is the struct student what has defined it for me this definition has i mean this this lines of these lines of code have defined it for me that i have defined a new data type which is called struct student so any questions or comments here and after defining the data type do we have to write struct student like in the uh, main not just student uh, so uh, so designing the data type meaning like uh, after we define the data type hmm. right then we have to write struct like, suppose we want to create a variable of the data type yes yes then yes, should then... we write struct student not student we can't write student s no you cannot write student s we will come to it i mean when can you uh define a shortcut for this you it is annoying to have this struct student repeatedly then you can define a name for it which is uh, uh something like stud that you can do it using what is called as type definitions we'll come to it but if you have defined the uh if you have uh, defined the data type in this way and not you still do not have any type def then to have a variable of this type uh struct student you must write struct student s and s is the variable of this type which is struct student yes okay yeah and we Any could not initialize question? and we could not initialize the members inside the structure isn't it we cannot sorry um ma'am we cannot initialize the structure members inside the structures isn't it ma'am so inside the structure meaning what so remember that this by just doing this uh, i mean these these lines of code right you do not have any memory this is okay sorry so this is just telling the compiler that there is a new data type of type struct student so there so what can you initialize the memory that you have allocated for some variable but you have by by just these lines of code which i have highlighted 
there is no memory that is allocated is that clear so uh, ma'am i think the doubt was in c++ when after the curly bracket if we could say s there then it initializes s as a struct student variable can we do that here as well okay so uh, wait uh, wait for a minute so first of all uh, i mean you are you are jumping one uh, line ahead so uh, let me just go back to gitartha who had asked this question so your question was can you initialize it here is that is that the question or is it is it what sri lakshmi has asked and my question is clear i asked that if we can if we could write for example in a equals to 5 we could not do that but in this place itself right here itself yes. you are asking okay uh, yes, so that that's, that is why i want to answer this that when you have when you have defined this that is struct student and all of this only you have no memory you have not assigned any memory so what can you initialize in you can only initialize things for which you have memory right this these lines of code are telling the compiler that you have a new data type which is called struct student there is no variable unless you define something which sri lakshmi was saying that you will define a new variable called s right but i don't think you were even going to that right so uh, clearly the answer is no you cannot initialize anything there because you don't even have memory Yes, ma'am. My my doubt is clear now. Sure. Okay. Good. So, Sri Lakshmi, we'll come to your question in a minute. And uh, yeah, while it is very very obvious to make the comparisons to C uh, C plus plus and defy and to the class, uh, I'll just make this uh, very few comments and then I'll uh, then we'll try to stop comparing because yes, these are slightly. Uh, I mean, we are looking at C, which. Uh, does not allow the full flexibility of C++. So, uh, so C++ also has this in the class, there is this uh, public, private and protected and so on. So, in terms of, I mean, C doesn't allow all of that. In fact, C will say that all of this is public for you. So, in, in, in that sense, this is public in the language of C++. Of course, there is nothing like public, private and protected. But in the uh, in the C++ class, if you leave the this thing uh, unspecified, then it is private, right? So in that sense, there is a small difference, but we'll we'll not keep making comparisons unless it is very much required. So uh, okay, so is this clear? That okay. So the point that I want to emphasize is these statements are defining a new data type for you, but they are not allocating any memory. This statement that is struct student s is giving us memory. So at this place, uh, at this point, you can ask, can I initialize this? And we will answer that question. Any questions here? Okay. So uh, let's now use this. I mean, let's now try to access this and also initialize this, which which has been the question. So. Uh, this is the same thing, except that I, I have given slightly more space for the character array, which is roll number. So there are multiple ways of initializing this uh, student, uh, struct student S, which the variable S, which is of type struct student. And one of the ways is the following. So we are assuming that this, uh, this definition is available to us. That is, this definition of struct student is available. So let's say I say struct student s struct student s1, which is this s1 student that I have taken. Now I have memory for all this that I have uh, I have defined here. Therefore, I can say string copy s1 dot roll number. And uh, in fact, this is me 20 b 2 Are you there, Arya, today in the class? Know if you're there. Um, yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, good, good. So we are initializing this structure with your name and your roll number, and then string copy uh, s one dot name is equal to this. Remember that you cannot say s one dot roll number is equal to uh, double quotes. This is simply because you cannot assign two strings to each other by just saying the equal to sign. On the other hand, you can say s1 dot age so the important point that uh, okay i should have said earlier is that if you want to access members of this 
uh, structure, then you will say S1 dot the member name, which is S1 dot roll number, S1 dot name, S1 dot age and S1 dot program. These are the four members and you can access them in the following way. But to initialize them, you need to do, you need to do the string copy. There are other ways of initializing, but this is one way of initializing the structure, the elements of the structure or members of the structure. And uh, if there are strings, then you must have uh, appropriate string func string dot h functions invoked to uh, initialize that uh, character array appropriately. Okay, so another way of initializing, which I think some of you are asking, is the following: that is, uh, if you say struct s one is equal to, and then appropriately have these four things, then these are in this order, then they will be initialized appropriately. That is, roll number will take NA20, B041. So, Saad, are you there in the class today? Okay, I'm not sure. And then uh, again, I have just put in the age and the program as one, which are dummy values. I mean, the program is one BTEC for everybody uh, or possibly dual degree for some of you. But this is another way of initializing the structure. So this will initialize again appropriately the roll number, name, age, and program. Uh, when you are defining this, uh, you, are, you are having this variable S1 of type struct student. So uh, does this answer the question about initialization? Okay. So, uh, yes. Ma'am, uh, once more, Dr. The previous slide. Yes. Ma'am, here uh, we define a struct, and yeah, we give different variables struct student S1, ma'am, and we use it to get the input. So the, out, the one which is given outside the structure, is it for an example or? Is it also included in the function? The struct student S. That one which is alone. So I did not get struct student S. Yeah, uh, is that included in the function or is it something else? So there is which function I did not understand. So which no, part? Okay, is it on the right hand side or the left hand side? The no, right hand side. Like, um, no, ma'am, like we have struct student S, no, ma'am. Here, here. Okay. Yeah, okay. is that so, a part of the program or? Okay, this is a, okay, so this is a part of the program. Okay, so let me just, uh, okay, make a few comments about this. So first of all, let's just look at this program here, right? So if I just write this main program in a file, will this compile? This won't compile because it doesn't even know the struct student. So there should be some place where you define the struct student. If you define it inside main, it is available only to main. So many times, whatever we are defining as new data types, these are some things that are typically required for most of the program. That is, they will be globals for us or they, their definition should be available to all of them. So most likely you are going to define this before main the way we are going to define globals. Remember that I repeat that by saying this, this is not defining any global variable. It is just defining a new data type which is accessible to all the functions in the program, which are defined after this. And uh, by saying this, assuming that this statement is above main, then you have defined the variable S, which is a global variable of type struct student. So that is what I think was Kandikeshwar's question. Um, so we have defined the variable outside the main and also inside the main, right? Both. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is okay. So, I just wanted, okay, so maybe this slide is slightly can be improved, but th it, this just says accessing the, I mean, I wanted to stress that accessing the uh, members can be done by the name of the variable dot the name, I mean, dot the name of the uh, member type that you have, right? So, so that is what I wanted to stress here. So if you write the whole program here, yes, you have a student uh, student S, which is defined as a global variable. I mean, S, which is a global variable, which is of type struct student. There is a local variable to main, which is, a, which is S1. And uh, this is another way of initializing S1. Is that okay? okay? Yeah, I mean, don't read too much into where this is written. This is not a complete piece of code here. Okay. Uh, okay, so one thing which is slightly uh, different and we need to remember is, uh, is that 
you can assign structures to each other which is unlike uh, strings which you, we couldn't have assigned to each other so we have initialized this uh, sorry we have this two structures which are s1 and s2 and okay so please uh, please excuse me for uh, having these inconsistent things i i always want it to be uh, of uh, nine characters at least because your roll number has eight characters and there there is a slash zero so i should not have this lesser than that so i will correct it when i post the slides but anyway i for that e appropriate example i have reduced the number of the roll number i mean the characters in the roll number so don't worry about that but anyway the point is that you have two structures which you have defined uh, two variables which you have defined which are of type struct student which are s1 and s2 and you have initialized s1 appropriately with all the uh, all the parameters are appropriately initialized that is s1 dot roll number s1 dot name s1 dot age and the program then you can say s2 equal to s1 which which is the same as copying everything from s2 and uh, s uh, s1 and putting it into the memory that has been assigned to s2 so s2 will have the same initialization as s1 uh, by just this statement this is unlike the way we we could have done it or we would have liked it for strings so this is this is something that is not supported for strings or character arrays but this is supported for um, structures so this is allowed however uh, checking for equality that is is s1 equal to equal to s2 just like we could have checked is x equal to equal to y for integer variables this is something which is not supported it will lead to a syntax error so if you want to check equality of two uh, structures or sorry two variables of a particular data type which is let's say type struct student then you must write your is equal function which will allow you to support the equality so this is something which is uh, slightly different and which we will have to remember which is different from uh, what you may think that this is a uh, uh, aggregate data type it may not support uh, assignment of e uh, two variables of what data of that type but it does allow but equality is not supported okay so uh, any questions or comments this is something that we would like i mean we'll have to remember when we write our programs okay so coming to uh, let's come to this slide where we are again uh, just uh, illustrating a small part of it so uh, we have defined this struct student uh, which uh, which is a new data type we have defined and remember that we have not even had a variable of that type so this is this is something which we have defined in uh, outside main so this is a global definition which is available to all the uh, all the functions of this program now let's say we say this printf percent printf uh, size of integer because we want to know what is the size of integer on this machine let us say that size of integer is 4 and we we want to know what is the size of this struct student remember struct student is some data type just the way you would have said print of print of size of int or print of size of float or print of size of char you can also say print of size of uh, struct student so this is something that you can you can ask the compiler or you can ask this program to print and i would like you to tell me what do you expect this program to print out when you uh, print this out let's assume that the size of integer is 4 bytes which is the typical case so this is going to print 4 and based on that can you make the calculation okay good so please write down your answer in the chat uh, message and we'll see okay so one of so people are writing the number of bytes which is fine so uh, they are not given any space so 
as i said right when you say size of int where is the variable for the integer defined you are not there is no variable of the type int defined so still you are asking for size of int right in a similar spirit you can ask for the size of struct student so there is nothing wrong in asking for the size of struct student okay so uh, okay so uh, there is one answer uniformly from everybody okay so i don't understand what is 9 and 30 37 but the uniform answer that i have got is 37 there is one which is 2 and 33 but we have assumed that this is uh, going to be 4 so do not assume different things for the size of integer for the moment let's assume that the size of integer is going to be 4 bytes okay so if you have assumed that the size of integer is 4 bytes then uh, then then the calculation is clear right that you should have this is 4 plus 4 8 plus the size of the two arrays which have uh, which are each character arrays so therefore they will take so this is 9 20 that 29 plus 8 which is 37 which which is the calculation which seems fine so some of you who are saying 39 i would like to know what is that what is your explanation for 39 So Naresh, you have said thirty nine. Would you have some explanation? Do you have some explanation for thirty nine, or did you miscalculate? Uh, okay, so I don't know whether Naresh is able to hear me. So thirty seven is a reasonable answer. It may not be the size of. Uh, it may not be the size of uh, the. this thing so I, i am very surprised so how can somebody tell you the size of this data type right this is some data type that i have defined so nobody can nobody may have defined exactly this data type so i cannot hope that somebody can tell you that the type of this data i mean the size of this data type is going to be so many bytes so that is unreasonable but uh, i mean that cannot happen but what i am trying to say is if you have calculated 37 it seems to be a logical thing to do except that if you run this program most likely you will not get 37 because um, it is going to do some padding to make sure that the next uh, uh, i mean next student that or next next variable not necessarily a student data type struct student type any other variable is aligned and properly going to be uh, done at the proper uh, this thing so i mean uh, at it it will it it may pad out some bytes extra bytes so that it it will have the next variable at a at some pro proper location so proper is something that it may pad it out to kind of think of it as rounding so when i did it on my machine uh, i got that the size of int is size of uh, int is 4 based on that the answer would have been 37 but uh, i i get that the size of struct student is 40 so whenever you have a student data student where or struct student type variable defined it is going to get 40 bytes allocated some of the bytes are left out for you to uh, i mean left out as padding bytes so uh, it's not very important but you should know that the size of struct uh, student may not return you exactly the size that you are calculating it 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 will it may give you something which is greater than that and if you actually have padded and correct turns out to be some rounded number then it will possibly give you 40 only so if it is 40 it may not add something but if it is 37 or 38 it may add some padding bytes so that is all i wanted to mention here uh, this is something that you may be you you should be aware of but it's it, it may not harm hurt your programming unless you are going to go into that memory so uh, it is unlikely to affect your programming but this is something that you may be you may be surprised if you do size of and get larger and that is why i wanted to mention it to you okay any question about this so if you do it on repl.it i did not try it on repl.it but i tried it on my machine where it gave me 
40 instead of 37. And on your machines or REPL.IT also, I expect the same behavior. Okay, so uh, any, any other question or comment here? Yes, so all data members, yeah, so that is what it is, I wanted to say that all data members are going to get stored contiguously. However, the uh, the the padding is something that uh, that may happen at the end of uh, that uh, memory that is given to you. So it, there may be some padding or there may not be any padding. So it depends on uh, how the compiler allocates that space on that machine. But you may get something which is larger than what you calculated. And you should not be surprised about that. Yeah, so I repeat that only when um, you you define a variable of that uh, a struct, uh, whatever type, then memory is going to get allocated. However, uh, if you just make the definition then uh, of the structure, then it need not be, uh, it will not be given any memory, not need not be, it will not have any memory for it. Okay, so I think at this point we can take a logical break and after two, three minutes we can come back and resume the class. Okay, so Naresh, that is correct that you, your teacher must have said that we can get larger. That is exactly what I'm saying that you may get larger. You need not get always larger, but you may get larger than what... Uh, is the size that you calculate, but uh, it depends on how much padding is required. So you may not be able to predict that two bytes is enough or something. It it may pad accordingly so that it comes at the next correct place where you want to assign the next variable, right? So uh, I don't think that you can say that two bytes will be enough or something. Okay. Okay, so uh, so what we have seen till now is very basic. We have seen how to define a, define a structure, how to uh, access the elements of a structure, and how is memory allocated, when is memory allocated for a variable of a particular structure. It is the same. Whenever you define, uh, define uh, the, a variable of that type, only then we can... Uh, have, we have memory memory allocated for that variable. So it is always the memory which is allocated for a variable, not the definition of the structure. Okay, so let's come back to this, uh, come back to this first problem that we saw, which is uh, determine whether the point lies inside an axis parallel rectangle. And again, as I said, we are not going to solve it for the logic part of it. We are just going to see uh, how to define the structures appropriately and uh, how to access elements of that structure. So uh, this, this is the example. The first case is where you have an answer yes. The second case, which is the answer no. And it requires us to define uh, structures to represent a point and a rectangle. So we will build this uh, uh, hierarchically in some sense. That is, we first define a structure for a point and then for a rectangle. And as, as this shows you that you can have nesting of structures, that is you can have a structure rectangle, which is defined, which is your data type, which itself has a has data type, which is struct point. So how is struct point? What is struct point? Struct point is something that you have defined before that. And struct point has two, two elements or two members. The first one is the X coordinate. The second one is the Y coordinate. This name is something that you will choose. Just like you, you are aware of the names of the uh, variables you can choose. Similarly, names of the members you can choose. And this we are calling it uh, indicatively X coordinate and Y coordinate. Similarly, the uh, uh, for the for the two points we are appropriately calling them lower left and upper right to indicate that it is the lower left uh, uh, point or the end point of the diagonal and the upper right. You could have the other way also. For example, lower, uh, sorry, upper left and lower right and that could have also defined it. But then that has to be clarified that you are always going to uh, have 
the other two uh, endpoints of the diagonal to be determining the rectangle because it will change some of the things when you talk about intersecting rectangles or some other functions. So it should be clearly determined which two points are going to be going to define it and consistently you have to use that. So now the, the thing that you can see which is different is this is inside is much more um, uh, readable and uh, succinct and abstracted out. It has the return type which is int which is either 0 or 1 but uh, it is uh, but it takes two inputs one is a type which is struct rectangle just like so this, remember this is a prototype so you need not have the variable name so it is struct rectangle and struct point so the first one is struct rectangle the second one is point and now there is no confusion whether uh, which which one are you wanting to check which is inside and which are the two points which are the four coordinates which are determining and so on. So that confusion is completely solved by having defined these two user defined data types which are struct rectangle and struct point. So this allows us to club things which are related together and then also make our program much more readable in terms of uh, abstracting out things that are that should sit together. So this is, uh, I mean, I'm as I said, I'm not going to fill in this is inside that is left up left to you. Now I, okay, so are there any questions about these definitions? Okay, so what we, uh, what we want to do is we want to, uh, we, we want to execute this program for that. Uh, of course, these struct definitions are there, so I'm not going to repeat them for the in the interest of space. But uh, assuming that these are global definitions which are available to the program, you have a rectangle variable R, which is, I mean, I, instead of calling it struct rectangle, I'll just call it rectangle, but it is of type struct rectangle. And there is a point P, both of them I have used uh, uppercase uh, variable names to show that they are not basic data types but that what i have defined this is in in some way in line with the c kind of things that you c plus plus kind of uh, naming convention again not it is not requirement that you may be used to so now let's say we want to uh, we want to initialize these things from the user then of course we want to uh, we want to uh, Mm, scan the scan the four points of the rectangle and this can be done by accessing the member element which is r dot lower left which will take you to the lower left point but of course the lower left point itself is made up of two things which is the x coordinate and the y coordinate so of course before this scanf statement it would be helpful to have a printf statement saying that printf enter the lower left x coordinate enter the lower left right y coordinate and so on so that the user knows what to enter at each place but this is how you are going to uh, scan these uh, scan these elements and this is interpreted as not the address of r but the address of r dot lower left dot x coordinate so you can assume that there is a bracket here which is which which tells you that scanf should take the address of an integer which is this integer which is r dot lower left dot x coordinate which will have some memory which will be for an integer which will be four bytes so in a similar way you can access the other elements the uh, p is not a rectangle data type it is actually a point so p has only x coordinate and y coordinate so we are doing x coordinate and y coordinate and then taking the address of that so then once you have these initialized appropriate appropriately then r is initialized as well as p is initialized then you can call is inside rp which you would have appropriately implemented so this is how you can uh, you can initialize the uh, members of the rectangle members of the variable rectangle r and the point p uh, any questions or comments here Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's see if we can modularize the code further. 
and uh, ask can we write a write a function which says get point and print a point so let us say we we have the following two functions defined that is instead of saying this these lines right which are very very cumbersome we can we write functions which will allow us to modularize the code so shall we say we will have a function which will say get point and print point we'll come to it how to use it for the rectangle but let's first define these so let's say we have this it doesn't return anything but it takes a point as a um, as a parameter and then says scan f percent d and and the same thing point dot x coordinate and point dot y coordinate and its address appropriately of course print point will print the coordinates if you ask it to print it now if you if you want to do this i mean if you want to use these functions in main then you are going to say uh, get point r dot lower left r dot lower r dot upper right and then get point p so the question that i want to ask is is this fine to do such a modularization of the code and will this lead to correct behavior of or the desired behavior so what is it that i mean what is it that you should think about when when i am asking this is all syntactically correct there is no syntax error so don't worry about syntax part of it this is syntactically correct what what kind of things do you have to worry about when you are staring at this get point i mean what are the things that you should consider when you are good so i am getting the correct questions but two of you have possibly raised it okay so i'm seeing two or three people telling me what is the what kind of questions do you have to ask okay so uh, so uh, structures are indeed passed by value they are not passed by reference so when uh, you uh, when you say this get point let's forget about get point r dot upper even just this get point p right so then there is this variable p whose uh, x and y coordinates that is x coord and y coord coord are the ones that you want to initialize however because it is passed by value therefore a copy of that uh, structure is going to get created and that copy is passed to this uh, function which is get point so the for that copy you are going to be correctly initializing the uh, memory cells or the variables x coord and y y coord so at this point the pt dot x coord and y coord are correctly initialized but when you come to main this p dot x coord and y coord are not initialized because a copy of that was initialized so the same way same reasoning why swap doesn't work p is not going to get initialized by saying this so what we need to do is if we want to write such a function we must have uh, a pass by reference or we should send the address of this variable to make sure that we can access uh the cells that we want to initialize just the way we pass the address of the variables x and y when we wanted to swap them so uh the point to remember is that uh structures are passed by value and not by addresses unlike the uh, arrays which are passed by reference or passed by an address so one small thing that i want to bring out is that here anyway x and y are Uh, for the point x and y are uh, integer variables however let's go back to our uh, student definition so this student had the following uh, variables that's following members which is a roll number which is a character array of size 9 name which is a character array of size uh, 20 and age and program so we know that if you pass arrays to uh, 
functions then they are passed by reference or by address however when they are nested or when they are embedded inside a uh, inside a structure even if you say that okay so you would have said get student and said uh, you would have passed to s1 to it still the copy of s1 is created and the whole array is copied so therefore this array is still passed by value so it is not that its address is going to get passed so you still need a pointer to that uh, whole student uh, variable rather than just accessing it so this is the difference between uh, arrays which are just passed as it is whereas arrays which are passed which are inside a structure they these are passed by value because the whole structure is passed by value so the structure is a copy of that structure is made so this is again a difference between uh, the arrays which are passed as it is to functions whereas arrays which are inside a structure so any questions or comments here this is also something that Ma'am, i mean yeah an array of the type of the structure will all, will be passed by uh... Value only, but it will, it will be uh, it will be treated as a pointer only, you know? Yes, if you pa if you have an array of structures, then it is an array, so it will be it its address will be passed. Yes, but what I am talking about is different. That is, there is an array inside a structure. Yet when you pass for get student, let's say S one, its address, I mean, it is the copy of the whole structure is made and that copy is passed. Okay. okay and therefore we require pointers and uh, pointers uh, to structures to make sure that we can modularize this code so what we are going to see in the last few minutes is uh, talk about pointers and structures and how to access elements when you have a pointer to a structure so it is there are several ways and there is an easy way to access it by the uh, arrow uh, this thing and that is what we are going to show so just for illustration purposes we are we have we have defined a different uh, structure which is called struct number it has int imaginary part and float uh, real part so this is the definition of the structure which has two components the img which is imaginary the real which is Uh, the member real which is of type float and imaginary which is of type integer and let us say that uh, so uh, let's say that we have uh, we have defined this following thing that is struct number star ptr so this says that ptr is a pointer to not now any integer or a float or a character like we have been used to in the last week but it is a pointer to struct number which is our data type so it is a pointer to the data type which is called as struct number and this is how you so this by this statement you have assigned four or eight bytes of memory to store the address of a address of some memory location which will be interpreted as struct number now let's say that i i do the following that is percent d per percent f pointer ptr pointer which is this i'll call this always this arrow as pointer image which is the uh, which is one of the members of this structure and then the real which is another member of this structure this is one way to access this these elements when you have a pointer variable of course you can do the standard thing that you are aware of that is you can also say star ptr dot img star ptr dot real which will also allow you to uh, access those elements but what what i want you to observe is this is a neater and a, a succinct way of doing this so as it is written in the slide you can always refer de reference it using the standard way which is star ptr dot img but this is a more convenient and uh, used way which is which is this way which is ptr arrow img so this 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 is syntactically correct is this is this a program which is fine which will run well ma'am the uh, pointer is not initialized it needs to be allocated memory 
So there is no structure, I mean, no struct num variable for which we have allocated memory. So we, this program is again going to most likely give a set fault because you are accessing something which is not at all, I mean, you have not taken memory for. So this PTR has not been initialized. In fact, as we go along, it will be very, very nice a practice to do the following. That is, if you are not initializing something, then you say struct num num star PTR is equal to null. So that it is not pointing anywhere. And you can always check if that pointer is not equal to null, only then dereference that pointer. So th this is something some practice that we will put into ourselves so that we don't get into accessing pointers which are not initialized or not pointing to anywhere. So this program gives us set fault and uh, we'll see uh, in tomorrow's class more about how to uh, initialize, uh, how to initial, how to allocate memory for structures that is again using the malloc. But more importantly, what we will see is self-referential structures, which will allow us to build very nice data structures like, let's say, linked list and trees and so on. So I'll stop the class here. We have almost run out of time. I'll wait for a few minutes uh, and take questions.